This is my copperized V12 6 litre Jagger engine that I'm putting into a Ronart W152 replica race car. I've spent a lot of detail on this. I don't believe that any other Jaguar engine has been like this, but this is beryllium copper pipe, which is designed for carbon dioxide high pressure. Um, that's the fuel rail. Each of these is part of the original injector system of the old Jaguar HE engine, which I've adapted in silver solid on. These are Pico injectors. These are the injection bodies, which I've had to actually buy. And the actual injection manifold, the actual manifolds are down here, are made out of inch and three eight pipe from a refrigeration system, which I've soldered on on the inside. I've redesigned the water cooling system, I've done away with the original system and I've opened up um, an extra two ports which were originally closed on the uh, Jaguar cylinder head cooling system and uh, I've put aluminium pipes along here. Um, I've removed the original pump from down below and I've got a Craig Davis 150 which will thermostatically control the water flow through the actual galleries and cooling ports of the engine. In order to hold the fuel rail here onto the Pico injectors I've used fishing swivels here which I've soldered on to stainless steel set screws and as you wind them in it pulls the stainless steel strapping down onto each of these T's and holds it firmly in place onto the injector. These are copper spun and uh, they are the trumpets, the inlet trumpets. So in theory, the air will be drawn straight the way down and they're what they called exponential, all the way down and straight into the cylinder head. They've been smoothed and polished off inside. The fuel rail has got attachments to it so I can monitor the amount of fuel pressure. This is a vacuum rail here which operates the twin servos. One's down here for the fronts and there's one on the other side for the back. Down at the front there as I said before I've done away with all the original water pump and I've made a blanking plate off there and there are two inlets you can see the two ports there there's one there which is 22 millimeter to three quarter BSP and that's tapped straight into the plate here the blanking plate here and the pump will supply cool water straight the way through the water jackets and over the liners inside the engine. The exhausts are difficult to do on the driver's side because of the nature of the steering column and so um, I'm sorting the exhausts out. These are exponential exhausts which will come up two are underneath the steering column and the other four are above and they will allow the exhaust gases to escape um, without any hindrance and they will come out down the sides here and into the two exhausts here which will feed their way around to the back that has to be done 
Um, that's work in progress. I've done away with the distributor and I've got a 36 minus one trigger wheel on the front, which I'll show you in a minute. And I've blanked off the valley with a solid chunk of polished aluminium. And I've taken the alternator from down below and put it up top for gettability. And also it gives a bit more room down below with the steering column. This is a standard Ronart radiator that they give. Looking from down below, I can zoom in onto the trigger wheel, which I made up by hand. There's the trigger wheel, and there's a section of it cut out, minus one inclination on it, incremation on there. So that as that revolves, that will trigger the emerald system to fire up on the various banks on the ignition side. There you can see is where the trigger sensor goes on, which is on the original HE engine, and that will match up to the underside of the trigger wheel, and that will sort out all the timing, etc., on the V12 HE power plant. I believe this to be the only copperized inlet system on the V12 6 litre HE engine that's ever been done. I've not seen one to date. One or two might be saying, oh, well, you get an electrolytic action set up between the copper and the aluminium. That's not going to happen because you've got fuel going through it. The uh, aluminium shouldn't be a problem because we'll have a waterless, an Evans waterless fluid put in for the uh, coolant. Years ago they used to have copper bits and pieces on the original engines, on the Bentleys, etc. It was never a problem with that. So I don't believe that uh, this is going to cause me grief. If it does, I shall have to address it. So there you have it. This is the first, I believe, copperized inlet system for a six litre Jaguar V12 engine. And this, of course, somebody knows otherwise.